we are going to share a lot about uh, promoting quality education in Africa. But before reaching there, uh, let me start by introducing uh, myself. Uh, my name is Watama Wycliffe, the deputy CEO of uh, Uganda Anatomy. Uh, currently, I'm uh, here in Japan, where I'm hosting this meeting from. But uh, I represent Uganda in the in the African Voice International. Uh, before we reach far, I want to applaud the leadership of African Voice International for entrusting me with this opportunity uh, to host this meeting of today, whereby we are going to discuss a number of important issues that are uh, all attuning to the development of African uh, continent. Uh, Mr. President, sir, allow me to start the meeting if it does not take you bad. Okay, we are humbled to have you, Deputy CEO Amiabo Watama Cliff, on the topic promoting quality education. And uh, we have nothing to say but to see you lead the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that permission. And right now, I I want some members to give a soft introduction uh, before we can go any far. So I, uh, I see some members here. I see Freedom Giant Zorica. Please, can you give us a little bit of introduction? Can we know you better? And you're most welcome to this uh, meeting. I see Freedom Giant uh, David Menda. You will also uh, give us a brief introduction. Uh, thank God you were there. We are happy for you that you have joined us. Uh, please, can I hear from you, Freedom Giant Zorica? Yes, um, thank you for having me. So um, I would just like to join in, uh, to listen in because the topic is very interesting. But I'm working currently, so I, I cannot really take part. Just wanted to say hello. And um, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. All right. Thank you very much for joining us this, uh, this moment. And we look forward to hearing from you maybe uh, toward the end of the meeting, even the fact that you are busy. Uh, can I also hear from uh, Freedom Giant Menta? Menda, David Menda. Freedom Giant, Menda, please, some bit of uh, self introduction. Which anatomy are you representing? Yeah, it seems you are not near with us. Uh, today's topic, like the president mentioned, is about uh, uh, promoting quality education in Africa. So we are all what we are, or we are whom we are, we are today because of education. Believe me not, education has uh, played a fundamental role in your life. You are there doing what you are doing because of either directly or indirectly at the role of education. So just like uh, our great, great leaders of African continent had a lot to value about education. For instance, um, Marimu Julius Nyerere of Tanzania once I mentioned that uh, education is actually a weapon for self-reliance. That if you want to have a community or a society where humans are self-reliant, then you have to promote quality education. And we really see that it was not until 
some African leaders pursuing a certain level of education that we see uh, great changes uh, start to take place on the continent of Africa. So I see uh, Freedom Giant Menda says he can't hear anything. Maybe you can unmute yourself or check with the word gadget. But here I think members can, can hear each other. We can hear each other very well here. So without taking much time, today I want us to discuss about a number of issues. Among them include one, uh, to review or to look at our education systems in different in our different anatomies, whether they can bring out uh, the kind of education system or education quality that we need or not. By the fact that we have different education systems, we now look at the outcome of these systems. Can they really bring about the desired uh, outcome? And then two, we are going to look at why we are going to look at whether African continents or African countries have uh, the kind of quality education that we deserve or that we, we look forward to achieve. Do we have the quality education that we dream of or not? So we are also going to discuss uh, issues to do with the uh, with the how can uh, quality education be promoted in our different anatomies? Because you and me, we are the stakeholders in this event or in this uh, kind of uh, issue. And then if we are not to forget other important elements, we shall also have to, uh, to contemplate about uh, the components or what makes education to be uh, of quality. Why do we say that such and such a country has uh, quality education while another one doesn't have? What informs us about quality education? What do we base on to say that here we have quality education, here we don't have? And then like, uh, like usual, we shall not forget to hint about the, uh, the challenges that are limiting our education system to uh, not to produce the quality uh, products or the, the, the quality that we deserve or that we look forward to achieve. What are some of the barriers that have limited us from having quality education in our countries? Uh, this, I will also give a broad question uh, to, to all of us, the freedom giants, to look at African countries. Which country do you think provides quality education and why? So there are a number of things that we are going to share. Uh, I will not be monotonous on them. You will also be suggesting some of the key issues to discuss about as we continue. So if I'm to give you a brief uh, introduction or background about Uganda's uh, education system, in Uganda, uh, we have what we call a primary education. Primary education uh, takes seven years. And after finishing primary education, one has to join a uh, lower secondary or craft and technical uh, sector. So if one decided to join lower secondary, then lower secondary takes four years. And after finishing the four years, one can proceed either to upper secondary, which takes two years, or can decide to join any technical institution where he can be 
uh, trained in a given or in a specific skill. And after there, one that has joined upper secondary can proceed to university. Upper secondary takes only two years. And then after upper secondary, one joins university and normally university courses uh, takes uh, between three and five years. So a well-developed education system of Uganda uh, minimally takes uh, 16 years for somebody to graduate or to come out with specific uh, knowledge that he or she can apply in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. So allow me to ask some of you, maybe we shall just need like one or two members to share with us the education systems in your different countries uh, before we look at how can we promote the quality of education that we want. So uh, Freedom Giant uh, Mwomba, Nwomba, Nwomba, yes. I request that you, you, you say hello to us and you share with us uh, the education system in your country. Yeah, good afternoon, Freedom Giants. I'm Wamba Lawrence from Cameroon. The education system of our country, Cameroon, is quite complex. As we speak, we have the nursery school, yes. which is the kindergarten, which made up of the pre nursery for children less than two years uh, to three years. We have the upper nursery, which is made up of between children three to five years. And mm -hmm. we have the primary which at first used to be seven years, but now it is six years. Mm. As from five to maybe 10, 11 years. After I go to secondary school, we have the technical secondary school, the grammar secondary school, which run for seven years. There we have two different certificates. The technical, you can acquire the cup, or the advanced level, the francophones acquire the, what they call the BPC and the back white, the anglophones get the general common entrance certificate, ordinary level and advanced level to quit. After that, you go to the universities. For in case the universities in Cameroon they are quite professional. Some are professional why others are just literal, like other countries. We have professional universities like the University of Douala, part of University of Chang, part of University of Bamenda, and the best Anglo-Saxon university in Cameroon is the University of Boya, which trains more professional and international students, quite competitive. The University of Yaoundé one is one of the highest universities so far and the oldest in the country. It started since the uh, early 90s. So it has been quite professional. And we've got one of the best international higher institute in Africa, which is the uh, IRIG, they call it IRIG for international relations, diplomacy, and coal. So in Cameroon, the education is not bad. For we have 10 regions in Cameroon, and all the 10 regions are being invested with universities, with state universities. I, I've not yet gone to the private sector. With state university, we have uh, more than 10. In the Northwest region, we have the University of Bamenda. In the Southwest, we have the University of Buya. In the littoral region, we have the University of Douala. In the West region, we have the University of Chang. 
In the east region, we have the University of Betua. In the south region, we have the University of Ebulova. In the Adamawa region, we have the University of Gandere. In the north region, we have the University of Garewa. The far north region, we have the University of uh, Marwa. I will come to in, in, in Yaoundé, which is a central region. We have two state university, the University of Swa and the University, which is called Yaoundé too, and the University of uh, Guaykele, which is called Yaoundé one. But Swa University trains mostly professional social science courses like uh, law degrees, economics and management, or those fees. Why the University of Yaoundé one trains on uh, the sciences like biochem or other science subjects and literature subjects like mass communication and all the like. Uh, who come to Cameroon in private university? Most private universities in Cameroon are being specialized on the training of personnel, professionals. We have uh, private universities in Cameroon like the Siantu Institute, which is found in Yaoundé. It's this board with biomedical science, management and all other uh, subjects or professions. We go to University of Mountain, which is found in the West region, which trains mostly in the medical department. And that university has trained more than thousand doctors. We have some okay. architect university like the architect university of Fumban, which is under the auspices of the University of Chang. It stands on architecture uh, and other engineering field that deals with civil engineering. Uh, let me not forget, we have the Polytechnic in Yaoundé here, which also trains all engineers. And they are sophisticated engineers in such a way that they deal with 3D activities too. They can do 3D designing, 3D planning, 3D developing, or in 3Ds, which is one of the best uh, training school in Cameroon. We have the higher and the lower school of public works. The lower, the higher school of public works is found in Yaoundé, while the lower school of public works is found in Boya, the southwest region of Cameroon. For that, Cameroon is well advanced, but we have a, other institutions which train administrators, like the higher, the National School of Administration and Magistracy. I repeat, National School of Administration and Magistracy. They call it a NAM, but the English version is SAM, N S A M which train mostly administrators, magistrates, uh, financial, those who deal with state finances, uh, those who deal with the economy. It's one of the prestigious institutions of the country, Cameroon, which has really trained many. Among like the 50 ministers in Cameroon, at least 30 are from that institution. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you yeah, very thank much, you. Giant. Uh, Lawrence. True, true. Thank you very much for your submission. Uh, we really learned a lot from Cameroon experience. Uh, we realized that uh, for Cameroon, it's not so direct. Like you mentioned earlier, the system is a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, at the end of it, we see that uh, uh, specialized skills or uh, competences are achieved because you mentioned about uh, various uh, institutions that train specialized skills like professionals, the medical, 
uh, the medics and the medical sciences, etc. So, allow me to uh, connect to Mr. President. Uh, how do you understand quality education? Or what is quality education? Let me start with Mr. President, and then later on, I will tune in to other members. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Watama Wycliffe of the Ugandan Anatomy, a very real educationist who is really going deep to the core of seeing that indeed, we have nothing but realization and an understanding of the change we need to see in our global anatomy, not only Africa, but in our global anatomy. And I'm humbled to be a panelist or a guest um, for your host show. So um, uh, on my view, when you talk about understanding quality education, I first of all would go down and delve into the output that stems out from the teachings in our schools, right from the basic schools to the junior high, to the senior high, to the polytechnics and the universities. What outputs do such graduates come out with when they leave these schools? Even with the basic schools in Ghana, we have the junior high, the junior high and the primary high. Those are what forms the basic schools. Then from there, we go to the senior high level, which institutes from uh, diverse courses that are institutionalized towards people knowing what they really want to become before they go to the tertiary settings. Even within these times, if people should just stop there, stop either uh, when they are done with the basic level or when they're done with the senior high level, what outputs would they be able to bring? Would they feel stagnant, not being able to bring anything or they feel well endowed? And let's now go into the tertiary settings. After we concentrate on the topic or the course or the program we want to study and we graduate, what output do we come out? We just come out as people who now depend on the governments to provide us with remunerations or salaries every month in the uh, civil service we find ourselves in or in the private sector we find ourselves in. Or we see ourselves as people who are coming out to be very innovative, to see to the problems that are in our society. That's a problem that I'm seeing currently, not only in Africa, but everywhere. We, 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 we realize that we have come to a point whereby people are educated and just, they just come out void of nothing. And that's a real, 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 real problem that we are facing in Africa currently. And um, with your question, what can be done to promote quality education and what, what problem we also see in Africa also? And with this, I see basically the sense that we are not pragmatic. We come in and we just want to learn and pass and just flow through. That's the problem. We just want to learn and flow and pass through, but we don't come in with the practical skills that we need to exchew the problems we see in Africa. So that's my concern. We see people coming out and we see just less or none of graduates bringing innovative ideas, like bringing issues like maybe in the, in the engineering industry, like automobiles, like cars, airplanes, new designs, new apps, new software designs, more of what we need for ourselves. Every country must be able to have their own source of dependency. So this only does not only stem in Africa, but all across through Europe, Asia, we don't have to only depend on countries like China and Japan, France for, and Russia for various kinds of uh, products and resources. No, every country must be able to stem their own source of dependency to which they're able to produce their own goods. And as a result, no matter the economic depressions or hardships or recession that we face, we are able to still thrive and move on excellently because we have well endowed people from the education sector who have come out and are able to do things on their own regardless of whatever. So that's my issue. My problem is that we don't have people who come out and are able to bring forth phenomenal outputs because they just want to learn and come out, but they don't want to be resourceful in terms of being pragmatic with what they learn and coming out. So that's my um, that, 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 that's my um, uh, say currently on this. I can see other um, chats on the bill, but I'll just begin with this, then we progress on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. President, for your um, creative ideas. Indeed, you provoked us to think deep 
uh, in order to evaluate the kind or the quality of education that a country may be having, you first of all have to understand the output. Yes, I agree with you. Even if we designed uh, nice education systems like how, but if the output doesn't reflect uh, the input and the system, then what we do is just always in vain. So you realize that uh, a student studies up to university level, but upon him or her graduating, he, can, he or she cannot uh, fit in any society. He cannot do anything that is expected of him or her. So that really informs us of the gap between the input and output, between the system and what is expected of it to produce. Uh, that again reminds me of the philosophy of education. Uh, philosophically, education has two agendas or ideologies. Uh, one is to do with the individuation. This philosophy of individuation states that an individual is educated to help himself or herself to, to survive, to get the, the payment, to get employment and survive as an individual. Then another philosophy says, no, education is for socialization. Socialization here means a student or a learner is a product to the society. And if that student is taught, then he or she has to, 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 to pay back to the society by being innovative, by producing new knowledge, by also fitting in societal norms, by, by uh, co-creating with the society. So, but at the end of it all, uh, Educationalists agree that there is always need to balance between individuation and socialization. So the current education systems or the quality of education that we have in our different anatomies globally, uh, some are bringing out our, the expectations while others have totally failed then uh, toward the end of this meeting, we shall need to look at why uh, some countries have not achieved quality education. I've seen here uh, freedom giant Zorika has posted that really there is no proper emotional or social education, unfortunately. So some people are not actually uh, motivated. They don't uh, have too, as uh, they don't have strong uh, emotions, strong feelings or attitude of uh, attaining the quality education that we may opt to achieve. So thank you very much, Mr. President, for informing us about the need to evaluate the outcomes or the output of the education in order to gauge whether it is really of quality or not. Uh, let me also hear from Freedom Giant Lawrence. Do you have any addition on you? what do you understand by the term quality education and what can be done to promote quality education in our anatomies and the global ones? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, good afternoon once more. Quality education, the outcome of education. What is the outcome of education? Is education just telling, telling us the past history of people who invented this, who invented that? No, I think as from now, education should be for the output. You should, uh, we should be trained in such a way that we we'll fight to alleviate poverty fight to invent things that will help our near, nearest future. When they talk about quality education, are you going to transmit what the teacher told you? Are you going to invent your own? Or are you going to help the economy with solutions on 
running problems. Those are the things we have to examine. For example, a doctor should not just be trained to give Panadol or Paracetamol to people. A doctor should be trained to know the details of what is the component of Panadol or Paracetamol and to know how the doctor can invent her own or his own Paracetamol or Paracetamol. An engineer should not be trained to say, this is an helicopter invented by this person. How did she invent it? Let the engineer be capable of inventing a modern helicopter or a modern plane to uh, more than what the other man did. For example, in Cameroon, we have institutes like uh, FASA, F-A-S-A, -A, under the University of Chang, which is engineering in agriculture and forestry. They, they train them on how to grow plants, to create artificial plants, to taste the environment before taking up things. They create people not to use fertilizers anymore. And I, I watched a project where one student had to produce Irish potato without the use of fertilizer and it came, it did well. I think those are the type of things we, are, we have to encourage. We also have a uh, technical school which produce vehicles. Uh, let me just give you an example of somebody who won the technical, the best machine produced in Cameroon last year. His name is Metia Nevis. He produced a machine 3D printer which can print everything, but just that the size is small and needs some innovation. Those are the type of quality education we have to encourage. Let's not go, our education, the quality of education in Africa was implemented on us. We, the Africans, started with inventions, but right now we are very back in inventions. We have taken the white man's policy and we are implementing. We should try to create native Africans development policy for our quality education, in which we will promote. Let's, we can copy examples like China. If you go to China, you will see their level of education is far more, 10 times more than what we, most of us experience here in Africa. They train you to do and not to copy. So we should learn how to do not to copy as many are doing. There are countries who have engineers who cannot even produce a bicycle. Most African countries who have professors which cannot prove a lab result. So we have to change. Thank you. Well, as time goes on, I'll add so many things. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Freedom Jay and Lawrence. You've raised the critical issues here that we should to, that we should to analyze in details. Uh, from your presentation, we realize that there is a gap between uh, what we are taught and what we should do. Because normally, if you go to most of the institutions around, more especially in Africa, you'll realize that they, we are taught on how to do things. We, we are taught on how, am I, mis, am I misinterpreting? We are taught that such A, B, C, D, or let me put it more clearer that uh, our education system gives or leaves a gap in a way that just like Freedom Giant uh, Lawrence mentioned that a, a nurse or a doctor is taught that if somebody have uh, symptoms A, B, C, D, you have to use this either paracetamol or ambiclox to treat, but not showing this doctor how to manufacture that kind of uh, drug. So there is that gap 
we go missing with some knowledge that is very, very critical. We get like the last part of the knowledge and uh, not uh, channeling us through uh, from the initial stages of the training of the, or maybe any knowledge to be invented. We, we only, we, we mostly benefit from the last part of it. Uh, he emphasized uh, practice or practical learning, whereby we have to have hands on learning. And he, he also mentioned something to do with the societal problems that can our education solve societal problems? Now we flash back to our education systems. Is it or are they replying or solving societal challenges? What are some of the challenges we have today in our anatomies? We have poverty, we have uh, insecurity or violence. We have issues to do with the famine, climate change. We have very many challenges, illiteracy. So can our education system uh, play out these challenges? Can it solve? If it can, then it qualifies to be quality. If it doesn't, then it means we are actually not uh, having quality education. So thank you very much for sharing with us all that knowledge that he, uh, you have articulated. Uh, so as we come to the, uh, as we near to, we come, as we come closer to the uh, end of, the, of, of our meeting, I want us to discuss uh, more about two issues. Uh, one, in either Africa or any other country, as you personally, which education system has given you an insight to prove that really it, is, it, it provides quality education? Which country or which, which anatomy do you attribute to uh, to have a quality education and why? So that if chance allows, we can have to copy or benchmark some of the ideas and we see how we can fit them into our own context. So this comes under a section of education called comparative education, whereby we look at the education development in some areas which, which actually uh, provides quality or which gives the desired outcome. And then we copy some of the components and then we, 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 we fix them in our own where necessary. So I don't know whether you have uh, come across any education system that provides quality outcome or yes, that provides quality output or outcome that you can advise us that yes, if we look at this nation, it does like this, like this, and at the end of it all, uh, we shall have benefited. So let me start with the uh, Freedom Giant FK. The name is abbreviated, the ICFK, so you can share with us. Uh, it seems Freedom FK, Freedom Giant FK is not near to, or uh, maybe there are some technical problems. Um, before maybe I can ask another member to contribute, there are some other issues that we have to put into consideration when evaluating uh, the quality of education. One, the inclusivity is the education uh, system which is provided to the people. Is it inclusive or not? So here with the inclusivity, I, uh, I mentioned or 
I talk about uh, a number of uh, aspects. For example, it's issues to do with gender. Is there balance between male and female? How is the status of female education as compared to male? And also we look at issues to do with the special needs. How are people with special needs uh, are reflected in the education system? How are they helped? Are they left out? And then we look at the balance of education in a country. We realize that in some countries, some regions, some religions uh, are better educated than others. So for a education system to be of quality, there should be also need to cater for all the regions, for people of different faiths or religions. Uh, it should also cater for all the classes of people in a country. Uh, regardless of one's socioeconomic status, whether poor or rich, education system should be free and open to all those that are eligible to it. And then there are also other measurements to based on to determine whether a country has a quality education or not. We also look at issues to do with enrollment and completion rates. How many people enroll at the beginning and how many people successfully complete? And then after there, how can the graduates or how far do we see our graduates solving societal problems? How much do we appreciate uh, their skills? and the competences. So while evaluating the quality of education, uh, we have to broaden our thinking and uh, tackle a number of issues. Uh, so as we come to the conclusion of our meeting, I would like to ask if uh, Freedom Giant Zorika has any submission uh, from what we have shared since the beginning up to now or not before maybe uh, Mr. President can come in. Uh, thank you. Just give me a second. Yes. Okay, here I am. Thank you very much. It was really, really inspiring and you um, hosted if I don't know you hosted this meeting in a really good way uh, I was it was wonderful to listen um, you raised all of the participants raised a lot of interesting and important issues and I enjoyed it that's what I would like to say first and foremost and um, I would like to suggest if you are into this topic, and probably you are since you're <laughs> giving this talk, there is a great, actually, he's no longer alive, a great educationalist. He's, um, he was British. He's called uh, Sir Ken Robinson. And there are some really good talks of his on the TED Talks platform. And I liked a lot of the ideas that he suggested. There is one uh, TED Talk called um, do schools kill creativity? I think that's the name. So I suggest that a lot of the ideas you mentioned sound like uh, they came from him. So I, I really liked it. Um, and um, what else? What would you like me? Do you have some questions maybe that I can answer? Yes, yes. Thank you very much uh, for having something to say to us. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe if I'm to ask you some simple question, uh, mm -hmm. by the fact that uh, you've explored a lot, uh, maybe in Europe, when, uh, if you've gotten a chance to go outside Europe, you've seen different kind of education systems in various countries. So do you see any discrepancy between, uh, let me say, uh, education system 
in Europe to that of Africa, or I want to get that comparative part of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say that education systems uh, differ greatly in Europe also. So it's not just Europe or Africa. I don't know much about your education systems from inside, so I cannot say anything. But I know that, for example, in the country where I come from, and that is Serbia, it is um, pretty different also, I don't know any other systems, you know, I wasn't in any schools. So I'm just, I just, I'm just saying what I have heard uh, yes, from yes. other people. Uh, mm. In Serbia, primary education is uh, compulsory. And so uh, all the kids have to attend. And um, well, primary, secondary education, basically it's free. Uh, for universities, if you get on the state budget, then it's free. If not, you have to pay for it. Um, and I don't know what to say. I think our education system, honestly, uh, is falling apart. <laughs> but at the same time, so I don't really like the way things are going. But at the same time, Serbian people... I mean, we have a lot of educated people, a lot of uh, young scientists, you know, uh, nowadays come from this education system. So there must be something good about it, <laughs> even if things are not going that well. And I have also noticed that the kids who study hard in Serbian schools, they tend to be more educated than, for example, their counterparts in in America or even some um, European countries. But I don't, I'm not saying that they're more educated in general, just mm -hmm. there must be something good that this school system is offering. And then if you want to take it, you can have it. So it's also a lot of it is personal responsibility or the responsibility of parents. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what I don't like about it, though I recognize this in what you said, uh, you talked about the outcomes or what what is the result, what kind of people do we get after all these years of education. Well, uh, in Serbia also, after, even after you have finished faculty, you can't really do anything, you know, any you don't have any practical skills. Then when you start working, you have to learn these things. So this in in my opinion is not good i think in many other european countries it's more hands-on so you gain these skills you know in school also not just like after all your education you you start learning how to do things so i don't know if that was useful for you <laughs> yes yeah, truly really you are proved resourceful to us and the, that knowledge is really imperative. We liked it so much. Thank you. I'm glad if it helped. <laughs> and we are so, so pleased to have you. And the, we urge you never to stop, always join. And we, we discuss uh, important issues that uh, pertain to uh, human life existence. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I can, I will, I promise. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. Uh, right now I'm speaking from Japan and the kind of the difference between uh, education system in Africa. I don't know much about Europe, but uh, I'm now speaking on behalf of Asia. Here in Asia, um, most people don't have degrees. They don't have, not most, many people don't have uh, degrees. They don't have masters or PhDs, but they are so, so creative. Somebody who attained just basic education can manufacture a phone, can do something that can benefit the whole society, uh, which is totally different. Uh, to our various education systems outside there. So these people here are uh, practical oriented. They teach uh, their children what they ought to do 
or what they, they, they see in them, they, they nurture students' interests and then they train them in that perspective. So before even a child reaching 20 years, he or she is already an expert in what he's meant to do. So <laughs> this one is too practical than theoretical. Yes, so that is the experience I've seen here. Uh, if I'm to compare and contrast with the, our education system. So I'm so, so grateful to have hosted this meeting. And uh, before we come to conclude it, let me ask Mr. President uh, to comment, to have a comment about uh, what we have discussed today and maybe what we can hope for in the near future. Okay, thank you very much, Anyabo. Um, Tama Wycliffe, it's nice hearing from you. And you've really, you've really expanded on the need for us to have a balanced education throughout every continent, wherever we are, whether in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in the Americas, wherever we, in the Australias, we need to all have a balanced education so that we can bring forth quality outputs. You spoke about how you just, we just about, and then you spoke about how in Asia, we have people who don't even, have not even processed their educational ladders to their masters or to their PhDs, but they are very creative and innovative. And that is something that should really sense and ring a bell in the minds of uh, other people in other continents, particularly in Africa, because um, it's now become uh, an issue whereby it's not mainly about the PhDs or the masters, but it's mainly about the knowledge we are imbibing into our systems. We all need to, I won't keep that long, we all need to be able to see to that indeed, we are coming out to solve the problems of the society, not the problems of our immediate families, but the problems of the society. Because one way or the other, we are all intertwined, no matter the issue. If we give, if we have a family, our families are also going to they're talking about that family, they're also going to have new families together, new families together. So we all need to see to that we are answering the problems of the society. And that's um, a very, 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 very great disjoint uh, in our continents, whereby there's no balanced educational implementation amongst people who go to school. Wherever we end, whether in junior high school, in senior high, in university, we must come out talking the problems of the society. And that should be the reason for our uh, studentism, that should be the reason for that, yeah. People will just go in and they want to just read and see and pass the exam. No, but we must be able to understand the rhema and behind why we are learning. And through that, we'll be able to come out excellently. You know, people go to, people uh, in Africa, we have, when you go to a village, they, they learn under very, 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 very poor conditions. They must come out and go back to be able to satisfy the, the problems in their in their villages. Not go and come out and now begin to only think about their wives and their daughters and their children and just live individualistically. But come out for the wholesome eradication in terms of problem exchange in the society. So that's what I have very shortly. I just want to just uh, appreciate your lecture. We've been humbled and as a um, a student under your uh, your hostship has been an honor to listen to you. And uh, I want to say thank you very much for everything, uh, for hosting us, for teaching us on this. I'm really humbled. And, uh, uh, that is it for now. And uh, we leave it on to you before we end the dialogue. Thank you. Yeah, truly, thank you very much. It is a, an honor for me also to have been given this chance to host uh, today's meeting. And uh, I've really liked it. I've loved the issues that have been articulated here by various freedom giants. And I look forward to cooperating with the African Voices International and the global anatomy at all at large. So uh, as we come to the close of our meeting,
I would like to thank the efforts made by the President uh, Isaac Abodo for uh, raising such important questions and the debates that keep us active and the, being a part of the uh, innovative, uh, innovative people uh, to, to, to promote the transformation of our society. So I thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank every freedom giant that participated in this meeting, uh, whether in Africa, whether in Europe, whether in Asia, you really done a fundamental role and the, your contributions will never be underestimated. And we hope that this is just the beginning of it all. We shall keep on having many and many uh, and in the process, we shall never leave our anatomies unchanged. So thank you very much for being part of the meeting. And as we conclude, I will say a word of prayer and maybe uh, we call it a day. Let's pray our loving Father, King of Glory. We thank you that you've led us through this meeting. We started uh, with you and we've come to an end with you. We pray that whichever we have shared here, may we, Father, continue to work on it. May we, Father, be able to reason beyond uh, normal lines, to reason beyond uh, what others may think is at the end. May you, Father, empower us with knowledge and wisdom to be part of uh, creating the society that we need tomorrow, that we need for our generations to come. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the lives, we thank you for the ideas, and we pray that whoever participated, may you continue enriching his or her mind so that when we have other uh, discussions, he will be a pivotal person in such debates to come. We thank you, we place your name as we declare good health, uh, good knowledge, good ideas in our lives, in our families, in our countries, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Yeah, thank you very much for being part of the meeting. And the, I would like to end the meeting right now, unless otherwise. Mr. President.